Hello, my fun-loving reading friends. It's Ani. I'm so glad you came to read with me. Are you ready for a funny story? The subject of this book is something we're all familiar with. Some people call it tooting. Others call it flatulence. Still others call it cutting the cheese. And as the mother of four boys, I can tell you I'm very familiar with this subject of farts. You heard me right, farts. And in this book, we'll get to know one in particular. Let's find out more about him as we read The Most Serious Fart. If you have a copy, go get it so you can read along with me. Like and subscribe to Ani's house. The Most Serious Fart, written by Mike Bender, illustrated by Chuck Dillon. As you read this book, take time to pause on each page so that you can find not only the 300 hidden butts, but all of the hilarious illustrations. You won't want to miss a thing. In a not-so-quiet neighborhood deep in the bowels, lived a most serious fart with monogram towels. His name was Siegfried, never a smile on his face. He only listened to Beethoven and always carried a briefcase. Most farts lived in clusters, but Siegfried lived alone. He didn't have any friends, nobody to share a scone. He thought he had no choice but to live his life this way. Other farts were just fools who delighted in disarray. Come on, let's go around again! I'm going to beat you this time! Siegfried had held his gripe long enough. It was time to make a stink. Fart should be taken seriously, like a sneeze or a blink. Thanks to his fellow farts, nothing really mattered. Mocked even by babies. I'm tired. <laughs> Their reputation was shattered. The Board of Old Farts held a meeting once a year, where farts of all smells wafted in through the rear. It was a chance to be heard, to truly speak their minds. But most came for the after party and to shake their behinds. Siegfried had come for a debate, taking a pad and pointer from his case. He prepared four arguments to push the fart to its proper place. First, a fart should no longer depart from the depths of the derriere, but rather a more elevated spot, like the mouth, eyes, or even nose hair. Second, the telltale tooting sound was a dreaded cacophony. It needed a more dignified tune, like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. Third, the stinky smell of rotten eggs must be rethought and replaced. Siegfried preferred more refreshing scents. Lemongrass and minty fresh toothpaste. Lastly, Siegfried asked the board to reconsider the fart's very own name. A four-letter word like butt and poop brought them nothing but shame. So he offered a new title that suggested nobility. And dropping a bomb, he presented the farfloofity. Finishing his long-winded plea with nothing more left to say, Siegfried was feeling confident he had blown the old farts away. The board quibbled and squabbled, but ended in a stalemate. They decided to let the town's farts decide the farts' fate. To the mic each fart floated, blasting ideas Siegfried promoted. I am proud of my tooting vibrations. They've been in my family for generations. I don't care if babies laugh at me. Their little giggles fill me with glee. I don't want to be a fart poofit. Oh, for fart's sake, I can't even say it. 
Hooray for the booty! Hooray for the booty! Hooray for the booty! Siegfried turned his back while everyone joined the chant until the eldest fart hit the gavel and ripped into a rousing rant. Well, Siegfried, your fellow farts have spoken clearly about these opinions which you've held so dearly. You should be proud of who you are, not who you think you should be. One day we will all run out of gas, so don't take yourself so seriously. As Siegfried considered his fellow farts, he began to rethink his position. Maybe the other farts weren't such fools. Perhaps they cared about tradition. And so Siegfried formally withdrew his debate. A cause for everyone in the room to celebrate. Siegfried even agreed to attend the Fartstival that night to make sure everyone knew he'd butt out of this fight. Although he didn't throw a jig or join the electric slide, he saw one thing they took seriously, flexing their fun side. Siegfried still listened to Beethoven and enjoyed tea and scones, but he did so with plenty of friends and with grins instead of groans. The Rear End Siegfried learned not to take life quite so seriously. I hope you enjoyed our story today. See you next time.